the 2013 Level 2 Waves paper. Uh, question 1, Minor Spotlight. Minor is trying to design a spotlight for her school production. She experiments with a lamp in front of a mirror as shown in the diagram below. Uh, state the name of the position where she has placed the lamp. This is the focal point. And it's only an achieved answer and you don't require an explanation, otherwise it wouldn't just say state. But the reason why we can tell that is, is because the reflected rays are travelling parallel. And we know that the parallel rays will always, in, in reverse, parallel rays go to the focal point. And if you have a light source, as we have here at the focal point, they will reflect parallel. B. <coughs> she then places the lamp further from the mirror and notices that a light ray from the lamp reflects uh, straight back to the lamp as shown in the diagram below. State the name of the position uh, of the lamp. This time we're at twice um, the, sorry, not twice the radius. We're at um, yeah, twice the focal point, which is equal to the radius. Um, so we would call that the radial distance or the centre of curvature. That's probably a better way. Centre of curvature for the mirror. Um, and explain why the light ray reflects is shown. It's because it's travelling, um, I guess, directly along the normal. So if you imagine if you continue the circle all the way around, uh, that's the radial distance. It's going to strike the surface at a right angle, so the angle of incidence is going to be equal to zero degrees, and therefore the angle of reflection is going to also equal zero degrees. That's why it travels right back in the same direction that it's come from. Um, moving on, C. Mayana now moves the lamp closer to the mirror as shown in the diagram below. Um, she sees a clear image of the lamp on the wall. Um, the height of the image, now this is going to be important, so I think we should um, take note of some of these details. The height of the image is twice the height of the lamp. So height of the image is twice the height of the lamp. Um, height of the image is twice the height of the lamp. 2HO, we'll call it. And that also tells us something about the distance. I can see there's a calculation coming up, so we'll write this down as well. The distance to the image is going to be twice the distance to the object from the mirror that is. Um, so let's carry on. What does it say? The focal length of the mirror is 25 centimeters. Um, so we're being set up here for a um, a nice um, 1 over F equals 1 over DI plus 1 over DO calculation. We're calculating the distance from the mirror to the lamp. Um, oops, to the lamp, that's the part I should have had included in there. So we're looking for DO, the distance from the mirror to the lamp, the actual object. So what we want to do is uh, take our equation, let's just sort of travel off to the side here. We want to take our equation um, here and substitute in for uh, DO, so that we because we're trying to find DO. So we'll end up with 1 over F, which is 1 over 25, equals 1 over di which is 2do plus 1 over do from the original situation. Um, now a really good thing to do is just to double check that we're not dealing with any negatives uh, where we should have negatives. So our focal length, this is a concave mirror, so our focal length is positive, that's fine. Um, our image, um, where is it going to be produced, we're not even sure, but um, focal length is 25 centimeters. Uh, clear image of the lamp on the wall. Okay, so um, we would see if the lamp is there, if we represent it with our arrow as we usually do, there's an image on the wall. Is it going to be larger or smaller? Doesn't matter, it's a real image, so it's going to be a positive distance. Um, in fact, we know the height of the image is twice the height of the object, so this is actually a larger um, image. Okay, which also suggests that um, we are coming from, let's see, outside twice the focal length. Not sure. We'll check that anyway because we're going to get DO. Um, no, we're not. Yes, we are. We're going to get DO. We're not even. We don't need to check that because we're not going to um, be calculating DI. It's unnecessary. In any case. Um, we want to have a common denominator, so we can um, multiply the 1 over DO uh, by 2 over 2. That will give us 1 over 2 DO, 
plus 2 over 2 DO. That gives us 3 over 2 DO, uh, equaling 1 over F. Since we're trying to find DO because we've already got F, um, we could actually just flip both of those at this stage, so we'd have F equals uh, 2 DO over 3. Um, so 3F equals 2 DO, 3 over 2F equals DO. Plug in 25 into where F is, and you will get DO equaling, uh, what have we got? 3, that's 1 and 3 over 2 is 1.5 times DO, so that's 25 centimetres plus half of 25 is 37.5 and centimetres. Significant figures, we should probably stick with 2, but I don't think it's being particularly um, pedantic about it. If, if we are, we should round that up to 38 centimetres and then state to SF so the examiner knows, but you always include your poorly drawn, excuse me, but unrounded values so that they can see that you've calculated it properly. Anyway, that's the correct answer. That's an excellent question. Um, moving on. Uh, D Mona attaches her mirror um, to the wall beside another different mirror, and when she looks at the mirrors, she sees two different images of herself as shown in the diagram below. So what type of mirror is mirror one, and what type of mirror is mirror two? Um, well, we, if you were looking at these without knowing the prior version, like the question C mirror that we were dealing with, you couldn't totally tell for sure, um, but you would tend to suspect, um, and I'm talking in terms of whether there's a plane mirror in there or not, but we know they're both curved mirrors. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe we don't. But we would assume they're both curved mirrors, just to be a little bit tricky. And one's going to be concave and one's going to be convex. Um, type type 1 mirror, because it's enlarged, definitely can't be a convex mirror like this one. So we'll call that the concave. Uh, if it was upside down, that would give you a really good clue. But it's not, so it's enlarged. Um, mirror 2 is giving us the con... Hang on a minute. Yeah, the convex... Uh, I wrote that correctly. Yes. <laughs> Your security mirror always produces the smaller version. Now we've got to draw ray diagrams to justify our answers. Uh, so mirror one being the concave mirror. Um, let's draw a little concave symbol there just so we know. And mirror two is going to be our convex. Let's draw our little convex there so we know. Um, and we've got a, a, a upright um, image for the concave. So that means it's going to be inside the focal length. So you might have got a beep on there as my text message uh, came through. But um, so para uh, I'll, I'll do the setup for both of them, and then we're we're done with our objects and our objects. And our focal length is a negative for the convex, um, and we're going to go to a different colour so we can see this parallel light ray reflecting through the focal point. Um, and I, I prefer using the equal angle, um, using the same distance below the axes as the uh, ray passing through the object. And we can see it's spreading out. So we would have our dotted rays going back here. Uh, where are we? We don't follow the parallel one. We follow where um, it appears to come from if there was an observer over here because that's where the observer is. So they cross over somewhere here and that's our image. It's a virtual image but it's definitely enlarged and it's definitely upright like the um, earlier part showed. Okay, so down the bottom here, change colour again so that we've got a little bit clearer. Parallel light ray is going to reflect as though it comes from the focal point. Then we stick with that equal angle um, law. Our observer over here sees the light rays as though they come from this position here. So that's our diminished image which is definitely smaller and no problems. Okay, I think that's the last question in that.